Okay, welcome to the channel and welcome to the Cessna 310. I'm gonna go ahead and get uh, everything fired up here. Extra rich props up. Bottles cracked. Magneto's on, we'll do the left engine first. Five seconds on the boost pump there. That should do that nicely. Very happy with that. Alternator on and charging on the left engine. A little more throttle on the right, I find. Needed. Okay, we'll go ahead and start the right engine. There we go. Little stubborn there. Left alternator off, right alternator on, and charging, both alternators on. Here we go. Okay. Fuel's all selected. Set. And we're running. I'll record the time. Beautiful fall day here. Quite windy, but uh, it's nice. Definitely cooling off a little bit now. We are doing some maintenance checks on the aircraft. We've just done a number of uh, items such as injector cleaning and uh, checking the uh, fuel flow on the uh, right engine. Thought we might have had a bit of a problem uh, with that engine, but uh, everything seemed to check out very nicely. Uh, what we do have though is the uh, Telex throttle unit in that wing has got a bit of a dead spot in it, so we're going to need to get a replacement for that, or manage to get it repaired, and that, that's causing a little bit of difficulty because you can move the throttle here and, and nothing really happens uh, for quite a bit of the travel. I think that's why it's being a little stubborn to start at times, because you, you think you've cracked the throttle, but, but you haven't. You've left it sitting right there at idle. Okay, we've currently got a bit of a split on pressure and manifold pressure. Okay, brakes test and working. Go ahead and check the weather. Niner seven niner. Peterborough, automated weather observation system. Observation taken at two one three two Zulu. Wind three zero zero at eight. Visibility greater than niner. Sky clear. Temperature one two. Dew point four. Altimeter two niner eight zero. Peterborough, auto traffic go here. Echo uniform. Oh, that's awesome. Just before we pulled the airplane out of the hangar, it was reporting uh, 15 gusting 22, so that's quite quite a bit more pleasant. 2980. Going out on calm 2. Peter, bring you to calm. Foxtrot, Foxtrot Echo, Kilo, radio check, please. 
you to come easy for BFS. Thank you very much. Break, break. Peterborough traffic. Fox dot, Fox dot, Echo Kilo is a Cessna 310. We're at the uh, private hangars on apron three. We'll be taxiing apron three. Charlie Bravo for the run up bay 27, Peterborough. Okay. Peterborough traffic, Delta Sierra, clean uniform taxiing Delta Charlie apron three. So this particular model of uh, 310 is uh, 1960, it's a D model, has a very short nose. We have two main tanks uh, in what was uh, commonly referred to as the tuna tanks on each wingtip with 50 US gallons in each of those. This model has an additional auxiliary fuel tank in each wing uh, with a capacity of uh, 15 gallons. It's a uh, return flow system for the fuel-injected uh, IO-470 Continentals. They make 260 horsepower each at uh, 2625 RPM. So if the tips are full and you use the aux tanks, the return fuel is returned to the main fuel tanks. So you will actually overflow and, and lose your fuel overboard. It also means that while you might have 15 gallons in the aux tanks, and say have the aircraft set up in a 65-68% cruise power setting burning 12-13 gallons an hour per engine uh, you're not going to get an hour out of the auxiliary tanks because it's flowing more than is required and the return is being deposited back in the main tank not super complicated just a little different to think of and, and important to think of the two engines as sort of entirely separate uh, fuel systems you can feed from almost every tank. What you can't do is feed the right engine from the left ox tank and vice versa. Got quite a bit more complicated in later 310 models. I believe they ended up with up to 10 fuel tanks, some of them requiring transfer pumps and all sorts of other great fun but this one here not not too bad so 130 total gallons of usable fuel available for this craft so as i said we uh, we've just done a, a number of items so we're going to go out and just uh, see how our tweaks are improving got a slightly high fuel pressure reading on the uh, engine we've been adjusting that's quite interesting because all i've done since we ground set up and got everything nicely matched is remove the lines and gauges. This is pretty much where it was sitting before. So we'll just try and have a interesting flight. Won't be too long. We'll do this as an unedited video. Hopefully I don't make too many mistakes or ramble on about too much nonsense. Okay, temperatures, pressures are all looking good, mixtures are rich, bring the powers up. What you'll see here, if I advance the throttles together, the right engine will lag behind. Got a little bit of a dead spot in the throttle cable. Okay, we'll check the mags. Very important to have the nose wheel centered for this.
Okay, mixtures, props all working and feathering. See where our idle set. The other trouble we were finding was getting the idle set properly. Because of that dead spot in the throttle. Okay. So idles are on the little on the high side. We've got about uh, 800 and 850 there. It's about 250 RPM. So we have some more adjusting to do. It'll be okay for today. But, uh, obviously, uh, and I want that to come right back down, especially if you're going to a very short runway. Disappointed that we've got a split in that fuel pressure again. Okay, cabin door is here. Trim is set for takeoff. Fuel is on the appropriate tank. Circuit breakers are all checked and in. Auxiliary pumps. Switch on one. Switch on right. Beacons are on. Okay, normal departure from runway 27 in Peterborough, about seven knots of wind from the north west. Go no go point will be taxiway alpha. Any abnormalities or emergencies prior to rotation, I will uh, call reject, throttle idle, and bring the aircraft to a stop. Anything immediately after takeoff with runway ahead, if 7,000 feet available, will be landing straight ahead. The gears coming up or on its way up uh, will be continuing. We uh, have an engine failure once the gears come up. We'll be continuing on one engine, so identify, verify, feather, return for the circuit. Anything uh, not immediately affecting the flight but that we don't like, again, we'll join the circuit and land. Peterborough traffic, Foxtrot, Echo Kilo, Cessna 310 is entering runway 27 from taxiway Bravo. Be a departure heading for the uh, south, climbing uh, 3,000 feet. Okay, I think we're all ready. Oh, actually, that's much better on the throttles. Okay. We have temperatures and pressures are in the green. Airspeed's alive. We're looking for 95. Fuel pressure is nicely matched. Little bit of back pressure. Tell you what I did forget to do is switch my noise cancelling headset on. Hey, we are out of runway. Gears coming up. Props are coming back. A little out of balance there. Hey, gears up. Wow, that is very loud. Okay, nicely balanced now, much, much better. We're doing 140 indicated, 1,100 feet a minute climb. And those throttles advanced much smoother than they have. Little imbalance on the fuel flows, but this airplane sat for a very long time, so we're waking a lot of stuff up. We've been checking and, and double-checking a lot of the gauges in here as well uh, against uh, calibrated master gauges to see what's accurate and what's not. Okay. Towels and wings are clear. We don't seem to be leaking any fuels or oils. We are clear of the circuit. We'll start our left turn. Peterborough traffic, Foxtrot Echo Kilo is in the left turn out off of runway 27, climbing through 1800 for 3000 feet southbound. Okay, let's pull back some power to uh, 24 inches. We'll pull back a little bit more RPM. Uh, 2300. Yeah, prop controls are much better and balanced. 
The uh, right engine propeller control was set a little low, and uh, so on takeoff to begin with, you actually couldn't even get the uh, full rated RPM, and that also was causing a bit of a turning tendency, as you could imagine. Ooh, don't need the air vent open, it is definitely getting cool out. Okay, we'll switch the boost pumps off. That's tidied up the pressures a little bit. 2,500 feet. We've increased our climb speed to 150 miles an hour, and we're now doing 600 feet a minute. And we've got just over about 105 gallons of fuel on board right now. Uh, this particular model weighs approximately uh, 3,200 pounds empty, just over 3,200 pounds. And with a max takeoff weight of 4,850, uh, that gives me 1,617 pounds of uh, useful load. So it doesn't carry quite as much as the Aztec did, but it's certainly a quicker aircraft. Um, so of that 1,670, we can put a total of... Uh, 780 pounds of fuel on board, which then drops the useful load remaining for passengers and cargo down to 837 pounds, which is still quite respectable. Peterborough traffic, Foxtrot Echo Kilo clearing the zone to the south, 3,000 feet. Okay, we'll bring up Calm 1.